43.7 organogenesis and vertebrate formation by the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Describe the process of organogenesis. Identify the anatomical axes formed in vertebrates gastrulation leads to the formation of the three germ layers that give rise, during further development, to the different organs in the animal body. This process is called organogenesis. Organogenesis is characterized by rapid and precise movements of the cells within the embryo. Organogenesis organs form from the germ layers through the process of differentiation. During differentiation, the embryonic stem cells express specific sets of genes which will determine their ultimate cell type. For example, some cells in the ectoderm will express the genes specific to skin cells. As a result, these cells will differentiate into epidermal cells. The process of differentiation is regulated by cellular signaling cascades. Scientists study organogenesis extensively in the lab in fruit flies, Drosophila, and the nematode Sanorhabditis elegans. Drosophila have segments along their bodies, and the patterning associated with the segment formation has allowed scientists to study which genes play important roles in organogenesis along the length of the embryo at different time points. The nematode C. elegans has roughly 1,000 somatic cells and scientists have studied the fate of each of these cells during their development in the nematode life cycle. There is little variation in patterns of cell lineage between individuals, unlike in mammals where cell development from the embryo is dependent on cellular cues. In vertebrates, one of the primary steps during organogenesis is the formation of the neural system. The ectoderm forms epithelial cells and tissues, and neuronal tissues. During the formation of the neural system, special signaling molecules called growth factors signal some cells at the edge of the ectoderm to become epidermis cells. The remaining cells in the center form the neural plate. If the signaling by growth factors were disrupted, then the entire ectoderm would differentiate into neural tissue. The neural plate undergoes a series of cell movements where it rolls up and forms a tube called the neural tube, as illustrated in figure 43.28. In further development, the neural tube will give rise to the brain and the spinal cord. Conception, the discarding of unused embryos, a necessary result of PGD, is unacceptable under any circumstances. A murkier ethical situation is found in the selection of a child's sex, which is easily performed by PGD. Currently, countries such as Great Britain have banned the selection of a child's sex for reasons other than preventing sex-linked diseases. Other countries allow the procedure for family balancing, based on the desire of some parents to have at least one child of each sex. Still others, including the United States, have taken a scattershot approach to regulating these practices, essentially leaving it to the individual practicing physician to decide which practices are acceptable and which are not. Even murkier are rare instances of disabled parents, such as those with deafness or dwarfism, who select embryos via PGD to ensure that they share their disability. These parents usually cite many positive aspects of their disabilities and associated culture as reasons for their choice, which they see as their moral right. To others, to purposely cause a disability in a child violates the basic medical principle of primum non nocere, first, do no harm. This procedure, although not illegal in most countries, demonstrates the complexity of ethical issues associated with choosing genetic traits in offspring. Where could this process lead? Will this technology become more affordable and how should it be used? With the ability of technology to progress rapidly and unpredictably, a lack of definitive guidelines for the use of reproductive technologies before they arise might make it difficult for legislators to keep pace once they are in fact realized, assuming the process needs any government regulation at all. Other bioethicists argue that we should only deal with technologies that exist now, and not in some uncertain future. They argue that these types of procedures will always be expensive and rare, so the fears of eugenics and master races are unfounded and overstated. The debate continues. 1252 Chapter 43, Animal Reproduction and Development Access for Free at OpenStax.org. Figure 43.28 The central region of the ectoderm forms the neural tube which gives rise to the brain and the spinal cord. The mesoderm that lies on either side of the vertebrate neural tube will develop into the various connective tissues of the animal body. A spatial pattern of gene expression reorganizes the mesoderm into groups of cells called somites with spaces between them. The somites illustrated in figure 43.29 will further develop into the cells that form the vertebrae and ribs, the dermis of the dorsal skin, 
the skeletal muscles of the back, and the skeletal muscles of the body wall and limbs. The mesoderm also forms a structure called the notochord, which is rod-shaped and forms the central axis of the animal body. 43.7, Organogenesis and Vertebrate Formation 1253 Figure 43.29 In this five-week-old human embryo, somites are segments along the length of the body. Credit. Modification of work by Ed Uthman, Vertebrate Axis Formation Even as the germ layers form, the ball of cells still retains its spherical shape. However, animal bodies have lateral medial, left-right, dorsal-ventral, back-belly, and anterior-posterior, head-feet, axes, illustrated in figure 43.30. Figure 43.30 Animal bodies have three axes for symmetry. Credit. Modification of work by Noah. How are these established? In one of the most seminal experiments ever to be carried out in developmental biology. Spemann and Mangold took dorsal cells from one embryo and transplanted them into the belly region of another embryo. They found that the transplanted embryo now had two noto cords, one at the dorsal site from the original cells and another at the transplanted site. This suggested that the dorsal cells were genetically programmed to form the noto cord and define the axis. Since then, researchers have identified many genes that are responsible for axis formation. Mutations in these genes leads to the loss of symmetry required for organism development. Animal bodies have externally visible symmetry. However, the internal organs are not symmetric. For example, the heart is on the left side and the liver on the right. The formation of the central left-right axis is an important process during development. This internal asymmetry is established very early during development and involves many genes. Research is still ongoing to fully 1254 Chapter 43, Animal Reproduction and Development Access for free at OpenStax.org. Understand the developmental implications of these genes.